Hello fellow with Chopperoos, Chad Stanton here. And if you love building furniture, I'm sure you've probably asked yourself before, what's the hardest thing there is to do in woodworking? Well, I'm going to answer that question for you right now on another episode of Just Plain Board. In 20 years of woodworking, I still have trouble mastering this woodworking problem. It's become the most complex thing ever done in furniture making. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking that it's like dovetails or staining or even furniture design. But none of that has ever been a problem for me. My problem is pricing my work. Even after all the practice I've done giving out estimates for customers, I still find that it's not an easy thing to do. To begin with, I like to visit the home of the clients and see their style and surrounding. This not only helps me with the designing process, but it tells me a little bit about what they value in their lives. Upon hearing what the customer would like to have made, I try to see if they've done any homework on the subject. Some customers are very specific and they know what they want. Others only have like a vague idea. I like to ask questions to the customers on design features. This will tell me if they really know what quality furniture is, and it also gives me an opportunity to educate them if they don't. The last thing I do, and it's the most important, I ask them if they have a budget. Now, this is where an awkward silence falls over the room. The seconds, they feel like hours. They're quickly trying to size me up. What kind of guy is he? Is he trying to rip me off? But this is a huge time saver for the both of you. If the budget is too cheap, well, there's no point in doing the estimate. I just simply explain that at that price, it wouldn't even cover the cost of materials. Well, they quickly will throw the ball back in my court and say, well, what do you think it'll cost? I have found to never answer this question. Whatever price I say at that moment, that will be the price they remember forever. Instead, I like to give them this simple geometry formula. In the formula, you'll see there's fast, good, and cheap. Now they can have two of the three things in this triangle. The customer can have fast service and good quality, but the price won't be cheap. Perhaps they would like it fast and cheap, but then the quality won't be good. And of course, they will all want to say that they want it good and cheap. Well, absolutely they can have that, but it won't be fast. It might take me months or even years to complete it because I'm probably going to wait till when I'm slow and have time to work on it. Now, this might seem like a real bold thing to do, but they will understand where you're coming from. Usually, a happy medium can be reached at that point, and I can leave and work on a realistic estimate for them. By the way, I never do a job that's fast and cheap. My reputation is worth much more than any paycheck. Okay, there's three things to consider when pricing your work. One, the cost of materials. Cheap products are something that I always try to avoid, but I do look for specials and discounted items on where I buy my stuff from my regular suppliers. They usually know me and know my standards, and if they have something come in, They'll either set it aside or they give me a call. But trying to save money by buying cheaper material, it's only going to hurt you in the long run. I always like to tell the customer, it takes me just as long to cut a cheap board as it does an expensive board. So why not go with the better material? Two, the cost of the competition. It's important to know what the going price of the piece is that you're about to make whether it's a table or an entertainment center, what the competition charges, it's good to know. Sometimes just a simple quick check on Google can show you what others are charging. But keep in mind, if it's mass produced, it's gonna be cheaper than what you can make it. What I like to do is point out the features that my piece will have that the mass produced item won't. Third is the cost of your time. Now, this one is really difficult to do. Your time is very important, but you have to be honest and fair here. Your tools and skill level have to be considered. I figure things on an hourly rate when I do an estimate. 
Now having done this for many years, I have a pretty good idea how long it's going to take me to do each task of the build. For example, let's say that the customer wants dovetail drawers. A person with a router and a jig, well they can do this very fast. However, if you don't have that router and jig and you're going to try and cut them by hand, that's going to be much slower. Especially if you've never cut dovetails before. You can't charge an hourly rate. I know what you're saying, but Chad, you said that my time is important. Well, it is. If you're using the router to make the dovetails, figure out the time it takes to do that, and then add a little extra. That extra helps cover the wear and tear on your tools, because remember, all machines will one day break. If you're going to try and do it by hand, consider it as education and you're investing in yourself. Now, you can't charge them for your learning experience but this will help you with future jobs. Not to mention your skill level and confidence will grow and you just can't put a price on your self-esteem. Now by doing those three things I can realistically stay within the range of the customer's budget. Now if my price is a little bit over well they can usually deal with it. If my price is a little bit under well it seems real tempting to give yourself that little extra raise to bring your price up to their budget, but I wouldn't suggest doing that. Coming in a little bit under, well, it shows you're honest and you're trying to look out for their best interest. I have found that when I come under budget, not only do I get more work from them, but they usually never ask me again for a price. They just say, go ahead and do it. So those are my tips for helping you try to price your work. Even with those, I think you'll find that it's still one of the hardest things you'll ever do. But keep in mind, happy customers, fair pricing, and good quality work, that always equals success. If you have any other questions in woodworking, feel free to write me at stantonfinefurniture at gmail.com. On behalf of myself and Safety Dan, we say, go dance now, people.